Canadians going to get out of today's budget, David McDonald? Well, this is a photocopied budget. 94% of this we've already heard. Only about 6% of it's actually new. And the problem with photocopying your work like that is that you don't learn from the experience. And so the problem that we're seeing is that the problems that were problems last year are still problems today. So we were concerned last year that only half of the unemployed can get unemployment benefits, or sorry, employment insurance benefits, and that's still the case this year. Of those people that can get the benefits, about 800,000 people who are getting EI benefits, uh, uh, many of them are actually uh, slated to expire in the, in the coming months. And that was a concern last year. It's still a concern this year. And so these fundamental problems with the job market simply have not been addressed. Was there anything that surprised you in today's budget? You know, I was surprised by the foreign policy shift. So there's a, while every other department is seeing a cap, defense is continuing to grow for the next three years at its regular rate. And even after that, it's only scaled back slightly in terms of its growth rate. While at the same time, the overseas development assistance, these are the people who actually do reconstruction on the ground in Haiti and Afghanistan, their budget's being capped. And so what we're seeing is, is our foreign policy is moving more towards combat military operations and away from from the type of reconstruction operations that are really what's necessary in Haiti and Afghanistan. That surprises me, uh, especially in view of the projected withdrawal from Afghanistan of the Canadian military. You would think that that would have provided an opportunity to reduce expenditures there. You would think that there would be a peace dividend, absolutely. But one of the big one of the big things that's happened over the last couple of years in uh, in defense spending is that we're building up on capital. So we're spending on helicopters, we're spending on ships, we're spending on planes, we're buying big ticket military items, and we've committed to these contracts. And so the problem going forward is now that we're building up this combat equipment uh, and uh, and the government's just not willing to cut back on that combat equipment so I think the question going forward is once Afghanistan ends what are we going to do with these choppers do Canadians prefer to have advanced attack helicopters or have or have mass transit in the cities and it's a real choice that we're making this how will students be affected by today's budget Graham Cox well there's just not very much in the budget for students um, in a time when and the economy is uh, is starting to sort of get back into the swing of things, and the government's talking about uh, new uh, new economy, new direction for the economy, new innovation. Um, it's uh, it's amazing that the government hasn't doesn't mention anything about uh, uh, increases to, to the social transfer, uh, increases to, to funding for post secondary education. Uh, doesn't talk about uh, new grants. Doesn't talk about new funding for for students at all. And um, so uh, we think that uh, you know it's a status quo budget in terms of uh, students, and the status quo just isn't good enough. When when we talk about uh, uh, the number of uh, unemployed that need retraining, uh, the n number of people that uh, need to, to try to get back into the to the, the labor market. Well, given the number of of mature learners who are re-entering post-secondary on account of the recession then the status quo really isn't status quo, is it? No, certainly not. I mean, it's, uh, I think it's, it's maybe even a step backwards in terms of uh, uh, funding per student for the number of people that we're going to see trying to get back into post-secondary education. Um, uh, but it's just uh, there's no, no mention at all. And uh, instead, the, the government has gone down a road of, of trying to talk about innovation and commercialization and, uh, and uh, uh, it has a nod out to, to, the, to, uh, to students, but, uh, but certainly no new money. What do Canadians need to know about the state of funding of Canada's post-secondary institutions? What are students, educators, education workers dealing with right now? Well, I think that what we're looking at is uh, is a crisis, near crisis in, in post-secondary education funding. Uh, the provinces uh, uh, aren't uh, aren't coughing up the money, and they don't have it. Uh, and uh, I think that what you have is uh, is increasing student debt. Uh, the, the the student debt is well over 13 billion now uh, for students, and uh, and tuition fees rising in almost every in every province across the the country. So it's uh, it's in dire dire straits in, in terms of uh, funding for post-secondary education. Thank you very much, Graham Cox. We would say that this budget is a bit like the proverbial curate's egg, good in parts, which means that the budget contains some very positive features which are of interest for the protection of consumers of financial services such as credit and debit cards. Uh, but the question is, the minister reserves the right to regulate and we would encourage him to regulate, not to leave anything open and voluntary, because that's been our criticism all along. Uh, we also say that we like the uh, expanded powers for the FCAC, but we would also like to see uh, resources follow this, uh, these uh, good pronouncements. 
The one that we would really applaud is the fact that the check retention period has been reduced from seven days to four days and that one is allowed to uh, withdraw a hundred dollars from the amount within the first 24 hours. This is definitely going to be a great help to consumers who are not very well off. Let's talk about the deregulation piece of, of the picture. What, what, are, what are the areas up for deregulation and what are your specific concerns? We haven't seen much about deregulation so far. We have seen the possibility of regulation, which we would like to become regulation, not just the possibility. But Can you explain that a bit? Well, it's what I said earlier on that uh, the uh, financial services sector has been told that, that there is a possibility of they being regulated, the debit and credit card companies, and uh, we really would like to see that as regulation, not the possibility of regulation.